century from now when we're grabbing lunch with robot coworkers and handing our kids to robot babysitters, we may look back at 2014 as the year it all began. That's because a robot named Jibo is about to hit the market, according to his creators. And yes, Jibo is apparently a he and a Massachusetts native. Uh, Jibo is going to change the way humans interact with robotics. Christina Quinn covers innovation for WGBH News, and she got a sneak peek. Hello, world. Meet Jibo. Say hi, Jibo. Hi, Jibo. As this promotional video shows, Jibo is a jocular little device that designers have billed as the world's first family robot. Now in development by MIT researchers, Jibo is intended to be an addition to any family. Welcome home, Eric. Hey, buddy. Can you order some takeout for me? Sure thing. The developers say it can take pictures, serve as a media platform, and act as a scheduling assistant. Excuse me, Anne? Yes, Jibo. Melissa, just sent a reminder that she's picking you up in half an hour. Of course, ordinary smartphones already do that, but Jibo's developers say that's just the beginning, envisioning a future in which Jibo provides companionship. Night, Jibo. Cute or creepy? I went to find out for myself at Jibo's home base in Weston, where I gave a prototype a whirl. Jibo, please introduce yourself. Jibo, please introduce yourself. After a false start, I learned that Jibo's voice recognition is still a work in progress. But then he turned on the charm. Check out my moves. Slow down and you move too fast. He dances. <laughs> After introducing himself, Jibo makes one thing clear. He really, really wants you to like him. I'm even working on my sense of humor. <laughs> a robot who thinks he's funnier than he is? Now that's a truly human trait. So you can order Jibo, pre-order Jibo now for a cool $499, uh, but it won't be available until the sort of the latter half of 2015. All right, are you gonna get one? I'm thinking about it. I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure if I'm sold on it yet, but I know my husband wants one. So it's a split decision in our household. All right, to be continued, I guess. Yes, you can bring it on the show if you pick one up. Uh, <laughs> let's go now to Jibo's creator. Cynthia mm -hmm. Brazil is an associate professor of media arts and sciences at MIT and the founder and director of the personal robots group at the Media Lab. Cynthia, mm. welcome to Greater Boston. Thank you. So uh, I got to scrap the first question I was going to ask you and get you to tell me, was I right that you were watching that promotional video for Jibo um, with a bit of a look that you associate with a proud parent? You were kind of <laughs> beaming like you were watching a child take his or her first steps. Do, do you feel pride of, of ownership and authorship when you watch that? I mean, I think in anyone who, who creates something um, that is embodying your life's work, you, you can't help but, but feel that sense of, you know, satisfaction yeah. and, and, and pleasure, really delight. All right, that. so tell me, what can Jibo do now? Because Christina's experience seemed a little bit different than the experience represented in the promo video. Sure. What can what can Jibo do at the moment, and what will he be able to do down the road? Yeah, so Jibo right now is a prototype. So we're launching the product in late 2015. So what you're seeing in the, the video is, is the development roadmap. And if you go on the crowdfunding site at mygibo.com, you'll see the whole, whole roadmap there. So Jibo has a number of those skills in various prototype stages of development right now. So in the movie, you described the, you know, this, the speech recognition is something that is working, but we're continuing to make it more robust and more targeted to these initial skills. So it's, it's, it's a work in progress. And you know, the reason why we wanted to engage in a crowdfunding campaign now is with many crowdfunding campaigns is where clear enough on what we're building and we're early enough in our development roadmap that we can start to build that community for a limited run and now you engage your community, people who want to own Jibos, people who want to develop Jibos, as you're developing it so you can really get that input and make sure that the product is, is, is I, great. I want to ask you more about how the sort of communal development of Jibos mm -hmm. is going to work, but first I want to ask Christina, as you were looking into this story, as you were reporting it yourself, what concerns did you either come across regarding Jibo or did you develop yourself? Well, one concern that crossed my mind when I was watching the promotional video was toward the end, the little girl says goodnight to Jibo um, after he reads her a bedtime story. And I couldn't help but think to myself, well, shouldn't the parent be doing that? And, and so that was one thing that, that crossed my mind mm. in terms of, you know, is, will Jibo serve as a substitute for a parent? But 
you and I discussed this, and you know, what, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, I mean, of course. So, so GBO is not intended to replace parents or family members or, rela or even compete with human relationships in, in any capacity. So we showed a couple capabilities of GBO. One is playful storytelling. We believe from my work at MIT, there's a actually tremendous educational learning opportunity there. One of the things that I've discovered in developing these social robots is because a robot is socially embodied, when you actually bring people around a robot, it actually supports a group dynamic. So what we've seen is when moms or dads come in with their young children, they talk to Jiba, they talk to the child, they feel like they're actually part of the group and they do everything you'd want to see a parent do. They they're highlight things, they engage, to. they reinforce, they, they do all of these great behaviors that parents do to naturally help kids learn. And, and the device almost facilitates that. The robot facilitates that and brings it out because you don't feel the child's putting their nose in a screen and walking off. Well, you know, it ask feels you, like this group. I, I hear what you're saying, but mm -hmm. my understanding is that there is some possibility, or that this has at least been discussed, that Jibo could help care for, say, elderly individuals who don't have a human able or willing to come and provide care for them. Am I right about that, that that's a no. scenario you envision? No, yeah, no, no, no. So, no. so Jibo is there to support and empower people. It's not there to try to replace people or compete with human professionals. It's really meant to be a technology for empowerment. I think it's a common misconception when people see something like a robot and think, well, obviously you're trying to replace some one or some professional. And the new enlightened view for a lot of these technologies is they're really there to help support people do what people need to do for each other. All right, moving into the rapid fire round, even more mm -hmm. rapid fire. Okay. So development, we I, I won't have you talk about that, is communal, right? People can develop freely. Other developers can contribute to Jibo's functions. Is that a fair characterization? That's right. So it's an open okay. SDK, it's an open platform. All right, so that being clarified, I want to ask you about privacy concerns. Mm -hmm. As you know, uh, we have heard countless horror stories about personal computers being co-opted by mm. people for various unpleasant yeah. ends. What is to stop someone from co-opting Jibo and say, you know, using it as a virtual peeping Tom or a mm. surrogate peeping Tom with a family or finding out information about a family's shopping habits or mm. book reading habits or vacation plans and then using that data to direct advertisers to the mm. family. How are you going to guard against those things? Yeah, I mean, so there's a security question side of that and there's a privacy policy side of that. I can tell you that, you know, for this product, we absolutely understand that we need to excel in three things. One is, of course, this differentiated user experience. One is the extensibility of the platform and absolutely the third is privacy and security. So, you know, our chief cloud architect spent many years at Symantec. He's an expert in the security space. We're taking this very, very seriously. Um, our advisors are, you know, rock stars and really helping us um, develop policies that are going to make sense. And also when we talk about engaging the community, this is exactly the kind of dialogue you right. want to have with people. When Jibo is finally out, will you bring Jibo on our show next fall? Yes. Excellent. Yes. All right, I'm considering that a firm commitment. <laughs> Cynthia Brazil, thank you for being here. Oh. Christina Quinn, thank you.